Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Sharp Tongue Podcast. It's been a hot minute, literally hot in the studio right now. It's about 115 degrees. So like I said to the Patreon earlier, I might turn into Whitney Houston. We might get a little bit of upper lip church sweat on my upper lip. It might get real. I probably should have put all my hair up. The dogs are in the studio. They are asleep on the ground or dead. We don't know. Before we get started, boom, boom, boom. I can't speak. It's already too hot. If you guys want to help me out, just click this video below. Click like, subscribe to the page, share this with your friends, tell everybody to join the Maybay world, like this video, hit thumbs up. It helps me a ton. Make sure you rate the podcast as well. Anywhere you can do that. We have a whole bunch of ratings that are fun to read. We do that sometimes. So thank you so much for everybody who took time out of their busy ass schedules to not only listen to this podcast, but to tell me how you're enjoying it. Give us five stars. Five or nothing. And if you want to be a part of the podcast, you can. Give us a call. 513-916-0930. That's our personal line. And if you want the exclusive video unedited, you go to subscribe uh, Subscribe at patreon.com, patreon.com forward slash Jesse May Peluso. I'm already sweating from my back. And a portion of however you support me, merch, Patreon, coming to see me live, which you should. I will be on tour this fall, jessiemay.com for tickets. A portion of that will go towards the Alzheimer's Association and Hilarity for Charity. So thank you guys ahead of time for uh, supporting me. <laughs> as, it, as it happens every week, my mouth fails me. I have, it's, so much has been happening. I was excited a few weeks ago. I didn't even tell you guys this. I don't think I did, but there's a great documentary on Netflix called Remembering Gene Wilder, which if you know me, he's my guy. Gene Wilder is my guy. And I watched it with my guy uh, last month and it was so delightful. It really was a sweet documentary. So I don't know if anyone out there likes Gene Wilder or was a fan of his work, but it was just a really sweet documentary about his life. And I enjoyed it so much. And it made me realize how much of my childhood, how, how, much, how much of my memories from my childhood include him. I, and then I think, well, I don't even have that many memories from my childhood. It's hard to remember everything, isn't it? It's hard to remember all the stuff. That's why I think psilocybin's important. I feel like shrooms can help us with that a little bit. Um, speaking of shrooms, I've had a lot of epiphanies lately. And I figured out something very important, what my biggest obstacle is, and it's the same obstacle you have. And I'm going to talk about that at the end of the podcast. But speaking of remembering things, there's also this movie, I don't know if any of you have seen it, from 1982 called The Electric Grandmother. Does anybody remember this movie where this grandmother was an android and helped out, I think, these orphan kids? And I, I had forgotten about this movie forever until... Someone was talking about something. I was walking, hanging out with my girlfriend, Sarah. We were walking and talking, and I remembered this scene where the electric grandmother pours milk out of her finger. And I just remember thinking as a kid, man, that's the greatest grandma. I want my grandma to pour milk out of her finger. I thought, wow, that's a rich finger. Just an endless supply of milk. I'd even question where it came from. Don't you miss that as a kid? There's this beautiful balance of complete curiosity and utter trust because you're not quite jaded by life yet. That's not to say that being jaded is a negative thing. I think an, a portion of being jaded is okay. There's a protective element that happens, but being too jaded blocks you. It's a block and you're not able to experience the full abundance and the full spectrum of love that life has to offer. But I never questioned the fact that this woman could pour milk out of her finger. And that kind of belief is powerful. That's why children are so powerful also extremely annoying all day long. They're like, why, 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 why? That's why parents should do edibles. You take an edible and your kid's like, why? And you're like, well, I never thought about why Elliot. I don't know. You want to go play around in the dirt for four hours and think about it. That's why you guys should loosen, loosen the reins on yourself a little bit. Take a, take a light edible. See if you can't get along with your kids a little bit more. See if you can't lower those jaded walls that you have and play with your kids a little. Get in the dirt. Become a kid again. We all deserve it. It made me think of, remember David after the dentist? I feel like that was the first time where a video really went viral. And also a parent exploiting their children. Let's be real. It's a little exploitative. Exploitative. 
Explo- blah, 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 a little exploitative to videotape your child in a very vulnerable position. Not only is it vulnerable to have some strangers' fingers in your mouth digging around for critters, you're also on drugs as a kid. And being a kid in general, I think, is just like being on drugs because you're, you're just up. You're like, let's go. You guys want to build a fort? Who wants to run around the block? I want a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And you crash for an hour. Then you're like, ah! David after the dentist is the greatest video ever. It's simply hilarious. He's just so cute and drugged up. And he also sounds like every adult in crisis. Doesn't he? It's like, is this real life? How many times have you found yourself just screaming that out into the ether? Is this real life? (gasps) Is this going to be forever? Oh, God. I feel like David right now. Uh, Shout out to David. We should get him on the podcast. I'm going to get David on the podcast. I'm sure he's done a bunch. I got to ask him how he's doing and if he's recovered from his, his juvenile existential crisis. There's some cute news. There is some cute news. Syracuse says people are abandoning their dogs in record numbers. I know this is a big emotional swing right now, guys. We're taking a huge shift. They're tying puppies to fences, dumpsters, flagpoles, and even the rail outside of the city's animal control office. Families are dumping longtime companions in parks. The dog will wait even weeks in the same place, hoping their people will return. And often, the Good Samaritans who rescue the dogs receive a heartbreaking response from the city's dog shelters and dog control officers. Full house, nothing we can do. Syracuse is in the middle of a stray dog crisis, unlike any... Anything animal welfare workers have ever seen, the animal shelter the city pays to take its stray dogs has been full all year. Another small shelter in the city decided to run and fund itself is also full. So this is horrible. I found this on Instagram, Syracuse.com. So anyone who lives in Syracuse, if you're looking to buy a dog or a puppy, look, I know not all dogs are created equal. I have three pound puppies. They're nuts, but they're all amazing. You can get any type of dog in a shelter, and I'm not poo-pooing breeding. I'm not going to get on some pedestal and say, oh, God, I'll bring a dog. It's not right. But it's basically, think of it as thrift shopping. Think of it as being economical. Something already exists, and it's about to go to waste. Why not just pick it up and see if it doesn't fit your family? So if you're in Syracuse, even in the surrounding area, and that's safe to say for wherever you live, if you're thinking about getting a dog, don't disregard or think that getting a pound puppy is a bad idea. Don't disregard a pound puppy or the idea of it because it's such a special experience and you're able to really turn a creature's life around. And if you're worried and you have children, you can get puppies. You can start them from the beginning. And while they may have some issues, I'm telling you that with a little bit of training, a little bit of research, you know, Cesar Milan, I'm the back leader. He says, go by breed first because they have those ingrained tendencies, whatever their breed was meant for back in the day. If you're looking for a family dog, you should look at a breed that is good with children. But I'm I'm begging people just to get some dogs off the streets because as a person who's lived in a city where we're do- barely doing anything about the people, at least we can do something about the dogs. At the very minimum, we've got to do something for everyone, but we can't fix all the problems, apparently. We're just keep creating new ones. That's why this podcast is so important. We're here to forget it all, right? Not completely. So go out and get a little pound puppy, please. And if you've gotten a pound puppy, tell me about it. Email me. Tell me the story about your your dog and how it's helped your family or how you may have had a Marley and me situation. Or the dog just destroys your house. Email me, Jesse May Peluso, comedy at gmail.com. I want to hear your pound puppy stories. Uh, I, I was home. I went to a country music show, and it was quite spectacular. It was at the court down the, the new stadium they have in the waterfront. I think they spent $3,700 billion to make it. But it's a really cool little spot. It's very upstate. You know, all these people are out there and I thought, oh God, this is going to be interesting country music. It's really a crossroads of a lot of different people, a lot of different people. And I was not sure about it, but I, I'm open to new experiences. I went with my family and it ended up being a lot of fun. This girl stole the show 
Ashley, damn, what was her name? Ashley, oh, I can't think of it, and I don't have enough internet service to look it up right now. Ashley something, but I'll put her name in her Spotify in the show notes. She was fantastic. She was the opener. She had so much energy. She was so cute. But it was interesting because there were three acts, and each act got progressively louder. And I, I thought that maybe it was my edible, but I had microdosed, so it was a small edible. It wasn't really that much. Not that much to make me feel like sound had changed. They physically turned the sound up and just got you like ready to go. And I thought, why not kick it off with some energy? Why not just kick it off? Look, we're going out. You better rally. Okay? I don't think we need to like ease people into fun. Let's we're ready to have fun. I'm ready to freaking party. So bring it on. Turn the music up. Let's go. Let's get at this thing. But, you know, she came out and it was kind of like cute. You know, the sound was cute. And the second guy came out and it was like a little bit cuter than the third guy came out. And I'm like, man, this guy is in my chest. I also was annoyed with the last guys. I think his name is Jordan. I'll have to find Jordan. See, I'm so bad. I'm not a country music. Not that I'm not a country music fan. I, I don't know a lot of new music which is a really bad sign. I need to start listening to some new songs. I just get on my radio and I put on like Jimi Hendrix and, you know, the Beatles. Maybe a little bit of, you know, Sabrina Carpenter. I'm not completely out of touch. A little bit of Patti Smith if I'm feeling it. I like, a, I like all different types of music, but finding new music, I feel, can be a little challenging right now. There's so much music. There's so many songs and so many artists that it's kind of diluted so you... Sometimes, I don't know if you guys do this, you just revert back to what you know. 90s hip hop, Mary J. Blige, all day long. What's the 411, hun? That's what I'm blasting. My cousin came over and we had a 1990s hip hop and R&B dance party, just the two of us, blaring. We played the entire Salt and Pepper album. We threw on some, you know we had TLC, you know we had Maya, Brandy, pff, Next. We went crazy felt like we were at a roller rink in my living room and it was just delightful but I realized I don't know these musicians they are uh, country music acts not that I, again I don't not like country music my sister's just a bigger fan you know her dog is she has two dogs one is Chesney and one's Paisley after Kenny Chesney and the other guy Brand, Brand, Brandon Paisley or Brad Brad I don't know the, the country music guys they all look the same they all look like wheat farmers and that's probably why it's so successful, because they relate to the everyday man, you know, barreling hay and cracking open a Paps Blue Ribbon at 2 p.m. while you're watching all the work you did, all the barrels of hay, hay wheelbarrows, you know, you're sweating from the, everywhere, you got dirt under your feet, you know, a real man kick his boots in the dirt. <laughs> I didn't like the way this guy's outfit looked. I didn't like his posture. He had really poor posture. It bothered me. He was shaped like a bow, like a bow and arrow. And it, it, my thing is, come out, come out and peacock a little. You're on the stage. You know, a lot of people are influencers and a lot of people are online. But to be on a stage, that takes a certain charisma, it takes a certain energy. Don't come out with scoliosis. Stand up straight. I realize I probably sound like a schoolhouse teacher, but chin up, motherfucker. These people spent good money to see you bent over, like you need to go to a chiropractor. And I, I couldn't stand his outfit, but I guess it's the appeal. He looked like he just came from a mechanic. Like he, was, he shut down his, his, his garage to come sing a couple tunes on stage. Like we were in, interrupting his night. Looked like we caught him right off the evening shift. And maybe I just don't know that that's the thing. That, that might be the appeal. Even the girl came out, the, the opening act, t-shirt and jeans. What's going on? Nobody wants to dress up anymore. Give me an outfit. You're a country music act. B blind me with rhinestones. Blind me with them. Wear th something ridiculous. Like I'm thinking, what, <laughs> what was that John C. Riley? Walk hard. Dewey something. Just really, you've got one shot in this life at whatever you're doing, do it hardcore. Be ridiculous. Do it so hardcore that people question you. 
don't dress like everyone else. You've got an opportunity to stand out and you're going to come out with scoliosis in a bowling alley t-shirt and ripped jeans. I've got ripped jeans. I shop at Ross Dross for loss. I don't need to see me and you. Maybe I'm just a different type of audience member. Maybe because I'm an entertainer, I look at it from a, a different, a different aspect, but and then the other thing is everyone's drinking on stage. We're all drinking out of solo cups. Am I in a backyard tailgate? Uh, maybe country music knows something I don't know. Maybe this is the key to their success. They're like, you're just in my backyard. Guys, we're drinking from solo cups. We're at Aunt Nancy's having a grand old time. Maybe that's my problem. Maybe I overthink things. Maybe just showing up in a t-shirt, ripped jeans, and a can of Bats Blue is the way to go. Maybe not Labatt's Blue. We should probably stick with like a bud. You know, we don't want to piss people off and drink Canadian beer. That just was what my dad loved. God bless you. That wasn't a beer. That was my spin drift. Flavor Flav sponsors Olympic water polo team after learning some athletes have second and third jobs. He says, I'm a girl dad. I got you. This is amazing. More Flavor Flav news. I just, it's amazing to see guys like him and Snoop step into these, realms, the Olympics and things like that, and bring a whole new energy to it. I, I really am here for this. I'm here for reform. I'm here for people who are trying to live authentically. Fa Flavor Flav seems to be the epitome of authenticity. I'd be so upset if he came out in like a business suit and spoke in a British accent and we were all scammed. As a girl dad and supporter of all women's sports, I'm a personally sponsor you, girl. Whatever you need, I'm a sponsor the whole team. A few weeks later, oh, oh, I missed this, sorry. In May, U.S. Polo team captain Maggie Steffens put on a call to Instagram asking for financial help. Flavor, whose legal name is William Jonathan Drayton Jr., we already learned that from when we had him on the podcast when we were talking about him before, was moved into action. This is where he says, as a girl dad, in supporter of all women's sports, I'm a personally sponsor you, my girl, whatever you need, and I'm going to sponsor the whole team. A few weeks later, Flavor signed a five-year sponsorship deal with the U.S. women's and men's team aimed to elevate the visibility and excitement surrounding water polo in the United States. <laughs> There's this great photo of him in the pool. So happy. <laughs> the sponsorship includes personal appearances and also means a uh, financial contribution amount undisclosed, which will help equipment with equipment facilities and anything else they need. He went on to say niche sports often don't get the spotlight they deserve, but they are packed with incredible talent and heart together. We're going to make some serious waves. Oh, it makes me want to cry. <laughs> Flavor Flav stepping up. This is the news we need. We need to hear things like this because we are inundated with so much negativity and stuff like this gets buried. So buried, buried, however you want to say it. If you guys find stuff like this that just sparks joy in you, email it to me, please, or DM it to me wherever you usually consume my contact, contact, content, Jesse Maple Luso comedy at gmail.com. Some people said, who have thought that Flavor Flav and Snoop would be two of the biggest hype men supporting Team USA in the 2024 Olympics? Exactly. Uh, he was on this goofy reality show where a bunch of musicians and celebrity lived in a house together. One challenge they did involved making a band with a bunch of kid musicians. The other people were being really serious and competitive about what kids they would be drafting into their band. Flav heard some of them dismissing some of the less confident kids and it bothered him. So he proceeded to pick all the shy kids who looked like they didn't want to be there. Kids who played clarinet and other less cool instruments. He chose all the kids he knew were going to be last picked. They didn't win the challenge, but those kids were left happy. We need more people like this. This is a type of inclusivity I am here for, but this is so great. Someone wrote Flavor Flav, Fan it's such a hard one to say, but Flavor Flavanthropist, which is a stretch, but good. It's just so great. Someone said, I saw him in the stands. Very cool. We need more generous, kind people like this. I agree. This is absolutely amazing. It's so fun and it, it sparks joy in me truly does flavor flav come on we need men like this who are in touch with their vulnerability and, and are able to like look and find a hole in whatever industry there is and, and support people who are unsupported you know guys that are like in tune with themselves i was on the adam carolla podcast also on tom papa's podcast recently and on adam carolla's podcast we were talking about toxic masculinity 
And not that I don't think it doesn't exist. I know there are masculine men who are toxic, but there's also men who are just masculine and they're feeling like some of them are feeling like they're being attacked and their masculinity is being attacked. I'm here to say that from my standpoint, I'm not trying to attack anyone's uh, masculinity. I like masculinity. I'm a feminine woman. I like masculinity. I believe in that duality for myself. I think when it comes to being toxic, that's where we draw the line where you use your power or your influence and you dominate people or you guys, uh, police have hazing rituals and some guys' legs are chopped off. We didn't really get to the bottom if that was a real article or not on Adam's podcast. But then I think about guys like this, Flavor Flav, who seems in touch with himself. I wouldn't even be surprised if we found out he went to therapy because Flavor Flav does not come from the greatest background. And he's obviously someone who's been in, you know, gangster rap and all of that from back in the 90s. Definitely was in some challenging situations himself, I'm sure. But here he is supporting an Olympic team and paying girls bills from the pure, pure part of his heart. We need that because what happens when guys don't go to therapy? We get Netflix murder documentaries and screaming music. So we need more Flavor Flaves is what I'm saying. I hope we don't find out anything negative. I hope people don't try and dig it up like it's some political campaign and, and drown him. It's, it's it's just delightful. It made me so happy. I've got a couple overheards this, this time around. If you guys have overheards, if you don't know the rules, everybody knows the rules. One sentence. One sentence, non sequitur. It could be in conversation with you, but I prefer it as a conversation you're walking by. Something you just hear. I've got a couple. There's one that someone said, and I said, what did you say? I made the girl repeat herself. She said, don't yuck my yum when she was eating something and someone made a comment about her food. And I'm known to do this because I'm such a snob when it comes to food. It's annoying sometimes. I see how it can be annoying. If someone's eating something, don't yuck their yum. Don't yuck my yum. I'm having this one moment with the food. Let me have this moment. So I think we need to get that into rotation. Don't yuck my yum. And also, I think my sister said this one. I, I can't remember who said this one. Someone said it just recently when I was on vacation. My titties hurt so bad, I need ice cream. And I said, God bless. I've been there. You ever been there where your titties just hurt so bad, you, you, need, you need some chocolate chip cookie dough? Just a half pint, a sweet half pint to yourself? Throw in a sleeve of Girl Scout Thin Mints and we're on a date, a solo date. And someone's going to go all the way with themselves. Uh, my titties have hurt so bad, I'll eat the whole gallon. I've never felt so seen when I heard that. I want to put it on a t-shirt. I think it was my sister. Just so beautiful. An absolutely beautiful sentence. A perfect sentence. Poetry, actually. There, there's some Maybay mail. Oh, we do have some Maybay mail. And we also, do we have any more news? I think we have like a couple more news stories here. Yes. Italian authorities confiscate almost a million in fake olive oil. Oh no. It got so Officials in Southern Italy have broken up an alleged racket selling fake olive oil, confiscating 42 tons of the extra virgin variety worth almost $1 million. See, this is a thing. You think you're just buying olive oil? You're buying a scam. You're buying a criminal ring. This is like the Italian cartel. This is gang shit. Seven people are facing a, a criminal conspiracy, adulteration of food and substances attended for marketing fraud and public military supplies and adulteration of food for export, according to a memo sent out by the Cabarineri. The raid carried out overnight. In Monday, in the Pugula region, involves several warrants for 18 garages and warehouses. Man, even olive oil is a criminal sport. Some of the 42 tons of the olive oil was already packed and ready for sale. Authorities confiscated 71 tons of what was referred to an oily substance. Well, I'm Sicilian. I get that on my face all the time. In plastic tanks, as well as 623 liters of chlorophyll, a component of extra virgin olive oil that was being added to oil of a lesser value. See, they mix stuff and then they put it in a package and it's sold as something good. This is why I'm a snob about food. And there was some recent articles. Oh, they're drilling again. Hopefully it's not too annoying for you guys. There were some recent articles that showed that there were, they were mixing like restaurants were selling crappy oil 
and they found packaging equipment labels reporting that the oil was extra virgin when it clearly was not in commercial documentation, including over a thousand customs excise uh, duty stamps that are being studied for forgery. It's just wild. Incidents of falsified extra virgin olive oil have increased in re- recent years due to both the popularity of the Mediterranean uh, Mediterranean diet and the effects of climate change. Oh, so now we're going to blame eating healthy and climate change? We can't even eat healthy. See, there's an eff- cause and effect to everything. I think that's why we just have to all chill out and live and let live. And maybe that's way too romantic, probably too simplistic of an idea. It seems like it could be the solution, but obviously people be peopling. Uh, it's greatly reduced the production in Southern Europe due to the devastating droughts, according to International Olive Council. See, we're, we're causing the problem. There's too many people. There's too much industrialization. The earth is heating up, and it's causing them the inability to produce the oil to basically maintain the supply and demand. And here we are, we're stuck eating crap. So we're poisoning ourselves. So what do we do? (laughs) What's the solution? I love olive oil. How do we know it's not bad? How do we know that it's like authentic? I think that there are guidelines that to show that it's authentic. You know where I get my olive oil? I get it from Marshall's. I've been doing fine. I go to Marshall's and I get my olive oil. That's how I'm going to solve this problem. Everyone just go to Marshall's, go to Ross Dross for Loss, TJ Maxx. Keep getting your olive oil from there. You should do fine. You should do just fine. Let's get into some Maybay's mail. We've got a couple messages, some some text messages. You know, we're going to get also read the winners. I did a little Baja Fresh giveaway. So we're going to do the Baja Fresh giveaway winners. There's a few of them. And uh, let's see. Allison says, I just needed to share the news that I now say 122% to basically everything. And it's absolutely delights me. Happy new day. Thank you, Allison. Yes, I did tell Tom Papa about my 122% because on his podcast, he said 100%. I said, no, 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 no. We're not saying 100% anymore. We're saying 122%. We're going to be original. We're not trying to do what everyone else is doing. 100% is done. We're not saying that. We're creating our new, new, and it's 122%. I'm going to put it on a t-shirt in the merch shop. I'm going to make a note of it right now. 122%. It's going in the merch shop. If you guys want to take me home with you, you can do that. JessieMay.com forward slash store. That's right. S-T-O-R. I know I put it. It sounded like I put a C-H in there. Go to my store. Support me. And I'm going to put the 122% in there. It's going down. Matthew Robinson says, good day. You are absolutely incredibly hilarious and very pretty. Cheers from the Eastern Sierra, but mainly I live in San Francisco. For real, you are so gorgeous. Now I mean, oh, thank you. You probably will never see this message because that's how it is. I'll be buried under a bunch of other admirers. But, you know, I believe in now and believe in keeping it real by being honest. You have a beautiful day. Sincerely, Matthew Robinson. Now, you know, I wanted to respond because I like to respond to my fans, but, you know, I've been scammed. So I'm not going to respond because I've been scammed. You guys know that. Not going to do it. Not going to get caught up in the scam again. But speaking of scam, this Baja Fresh is no scam. I was lucky enough to have Baja Fresh send me a gift card. They sent me a gift card to, to send me to lunch. And I thought, you know, I want to... I want to send my people to lunch because you guys have been supporting me. I get so much. I feel so fortunate from all of the things that are given to me. And I'm going to read the winners who we selected to win the Baja Fresh gift card. One more Maybe mail comes from Daniel Varela. Hey, I just wanted to tell you that I was listening to the Crab Feast, which is no longer. So you must have found. I wonder if it's still up. It must still be up. The Crab Feast with Ryan Sickler and Jay Larson. Yeah, that's from a long time ago. I heard the story about Gene Wilder and how special it was with you and your dad and being a dad to a girl. I hope we one day have something that special we share, even if it's the end, even if the, even if she end the story the way you did with Gene Wilder, (laughs) LOL, great story. I'm glad I heard it. I wish you the best of luck in your career. You're very funny. That's so sweet. And I wish you the best with your daughter. It's a special relationship for a daughter to have with her father and for you guys to be there for them, to let them know that they can have healthy relationships and that uh, emotionally available men are attractive and supportive and safe. And you know, that that they're going to feed us. 
So I'm basically like your guys' dad today because I'm going to feed a few people. Baja Fresh gave me an a e-gift card to take me to lunch, and I decided to gift it and give it forward. So I'm going to pick our winners. We have three. We have three winners. One emailed me, Michael Herrick. He said, I would nominate myself for the free lunch, and here's why. I had to leave my daughters on Kauai with their mom a week ago, and it was very painful to say goodbye. I've been dealing with health issues that have been preventing me from working more than part-time, plus a housing crisis in Kauai rendering me homeless, starting over at my mom's in Modesto, California. In the last three years, my health problems have included open heart surgery, replacing my low, lower aortic valve, a hematoma on my pelvis on my left side, and an ankle fra- fracture, pinched nerve between my shoulder blades, rheumatoid arthritis. Jeez, you've got a long list here. Hip bursitis, sh- shoulder hip fracture, pancreatic, kidney stones, a cyst on my balls. Uh, see, that's why I was like, this is a scam, but maybe it's not. Thyroid eye disease, diabetes, and persistent tonsillitis. If you're not a scam artist, you've got a lot of stress in your life, Michael, and I don't have enough time to see if you are a scam artist. I'm going to hope in my heart of hearts that this is, it's horrible to hope that it's true, but it's only because I want you to know you're not alone. He says, I don't know if being pathetic is a qualifying condition to you for winning or not, but I am a big fan as well. I love to rewatch your episode with Jeremiah Wonders, Brad Pitt for president. That's what got you the win when you said Brad Pitt for president. So Michael, you are one of our winners. I hope you can clear up all those health issues. That sounds exhausting. It still sounds like a scam. I'm hoping it's not. I'm going to lead with a pro noia vibe. The universe is here for you. Life is happening for you. So I'm going to pay it forward, Michael. And hopefully you are not a Nigerian scam artist. Next winner, Austin Imbrugia. Imbrugia. Austin said, I need that Baja Fresh gift card because I'm broke right now. I just had a job interview. She'll wish me luck. I said, where did you apply? He said, at a factory for uh, packaging job at a company called Pelton Shepard. They make gel packs for the freezer. And I said, that's so specific. (laughs) And I said, I'll I'll toss you into the mix. Well, Austin Imbruglia, you are one of the winners as well. Congratulations. Thank you for listening. And I hope you got that new job. If not, keep digging. Keep fighting. Keep looking for it. We have one more winner. It's so annoying to hear me sip. I might have to edit those out. We have one more winner. This winner is very special. This winner did submit himself, but rightfully so, because he's been around for a hot minute. He's been supportive for a hot minute. He's an OG. He is from Weeds Day days. He's from when I was recording this podcast, wherever I was on my laptop in a beach, in a field in Kansas. Very, very much like how news is sort of portrayed was how I was doing my podcast. He's been around since then. And it is the one, the only Blakey Sherm. That's right. Blake Sherman is one of my OG fans. And I thought I'm going to pay it forward to him as well. So congratulations to you guys, to Blake, to Michael and to, I think, is it Allison? Yeah, I think it's Allison. I could be wrong. And who's the other one? Where'd we go? Where's this other person? Michael. No, I already said Michael. Who's the other winner? Austin. That's right. Michael Austin and Blake Sherman. Thank you guys so, so much for submitting yourselves. Takes a lot of, as a guy, I'm trying to support male vulnerability. And you know, on that subject, we were talking earlier when I first started this podcast about what is your biggest obstacle? What's my biggest obstacle? And we have the same obstacle. And I was thinking about this, you know, I like to ruminate a lot and and self-reflect and reflect and think about ways I can be better and think about ways where I need to evolve. It's something that I do regularly. You know, I am a meditator. I do like to meditate. If I can do it every day, it's something I try to do. And I recommend it for anybody, male or female. Self-care should be genderless. And it's so vital. We all need help. We all need all types of help. And it takes a village for all of us. You know, we, we all have that like little kid inside of us that needs some help. And so I do condone meditation. And, and one of these epiphanies came to me in my meditation about the biggest obstacle I have is myself. And your biggest obstacle is you. All of our biggest obstacles are ourselves. We have to hold ourselves accountable for our behavior. We have to hold ourselves accountable for how we react to other people's behavior. We also have to hold ourselves accountable for if we're maintaining a non-negotiable boundary around our self-care, which is your responsibility. Self-discipline is a form of self-care and being disciplined about your health is your job in this world because that's how you can show up better for everyone around you. 
And loving yourself is the most important thing you can do because in, in the society, especially for women, there's a lot of conversation from when we're very young till at forever about us finding the love of our life. And I think it's about becoming the love of your life. You, loving you. The only way to get over the obstacle that is you is to love yourself. And I say this to the men as well, because I think it's a little bit harder for you guys. I think that you get crapped on for the attempt. And so I'm here to applaud the men that do put in the work for themselves and the women that continually do it as well. Because I know, sis, I've been there. I know what's going on out in those streets and it's a little bit more difficult in different ways for us. So for all of the people out there who are struggling, the obstacle is you and you can overcome it. And I hope that this podcast is a little bit of a bright light in your day and it brings you a little bit of joy. And I am a part of your self-care routine because you guys certainly are for me. So thank you so much for listening. I appreciate it. I got all mushy. 